Uh, so uh, I'm very glad to be uh, here, here with Megan uh, because I think it's super important for all of us to acknowledge the role that government plays in innovation. You know, those of us in the computer industry often uh, get infected with this idea that, you know, we do it all out here in the valley, but it's super important to remember government funded and uh, also released to the public a lot of the original design work on computers on the internet and also played an amazing role in this current revolution of uh, the internet of things and digital manufacturing. You know, we, we see talk about self-driving cars. We've got to remember who funded that, DARPA. Yeah. So, so I'm really excited to have Megan here to talk about what, what the, uh, you know, the White House and the government in general is doing to actually make this revolution happen and to uh, increase the innovation in this country. So, uh, so can you talk a little bit about this notion of the government's fundamental role in sparking innovation and research? Yeah, uh, it's huge. Actually, um, I came to government in September uh, from here in Silicon Valley, um, and we're embedded as the USCTO team in the Office of Science, Technology, and Policy. Um, which really has been in existence since the beginning of our country. I mean, George Washington founded the Army Corps of Engineers mm -hmm. before the beginning of the country. Uh, so we have a long history of in, including and, and that, but it's really in World War II that Vannevar Bush and the, those guys really start. What is this push that becomes DARPA, becomes that. So in the Office of Science, Technology, Policy, our colleagues our technical colleagues, scientific colleagues, really paying attention to not only the conversation with the American people and our greatest innovation folks, but the agencies inside government and keeping an eye on the budget so that we don't uh, lose our focus on NSF funding, DARPA, you know, NIH. Right now, for example, Precision Medicine, huge project to figure out interopt and really get personalized medicine pushing from NIH and cancer and the other research institutes it, and funding and funding and funding. I know we didn't, we didn't talk about this backstage, but you mentioned uh, some of these big agencies. Is there anything that we should be doing in a policy way to get more of that funding directed to entrepreneurs, sort of these biohackers we're hearing about, as opposed to large research institutions? You know, how do we get that innovation down into the trenches? Yeah, it's, it's a really important point, and I think that's part of it's part of sort of the, the, you know, CTO team, we focus on policy, we focus now on digital government, we're focusing on something I call Innovation Nation, we talk about that in a minute, but in terms of digital government, that's the area that I think helps with the policy. How do we get more Americans who are kind of from our world into our government since it's our government? So it'll be as good or bad as, as we make it if we show up. So. The reason why I bring that up is having people that think the Office of Science, Technology, Policy folks who are from our world, who are from small companies and startups, bringing those voices in and making sure that as we're funding, we're paying attention to not only large funding institutions, say our research universities, et cetera, but, but also paying attention to um, startup incubators and other opportunities and vehicles where we can support there. One of the big shifts uh, that Todd Park and Jen Pelka started together is really the push for open data. Uh, Anish had started that, but really ramping that. We just saw the health data palooza in yeah. DC, which was 45 people in the, uh, the executive office. Yeah, when yeah, you guys yeah. started this, yeah. like, <laughs> whatever, five or seven years ago, now it's like 2,000 people for an entire week. Yeah. So it kind of practice makes permanent. And yeah. how do we help our colleagues learn to ride the bike that we're riding instead of walking? Yeah, but you, you talked about bringing more people in. We might as well hit on this idea of digital government. I know, uh, Brett, this, the presence on the cover of Fast Company. It's exciting. Yeah. and. Uh, you know, the uh, United States Digital Service is the hot startup. Yeah, what's right? amazing is that in this picture, uh, this is the USDS team. Whoa, buy their magazine. Um, but the, <laughs> if I look at this photograph, it's an incredibly diverse team, men and women, people from all parts of the country, but all TQ, tech, what I mean is EQ, IQ, technical skills. And just about everyone in the picture, other than about five folks who architected a lot of this together with Todd and, and Jen and, and those, are new since August. 
people who have come from Amazon, Facebook, Twitter, Dropbox, uh, Automatic, um, you name it, incredible, com some people are on rotation, people have come for two weeks, three months, a year. Uh, the companies, Microsoft, Google, uh, Facebook, Amazon are all creating policies so people can rotate in and take time off. We need to lift sort of the digital core of our government and make it better. If we're the company, country that can make, if we're the country that has the people who make Amazon and Facebook and Twitter, why can't our websites be that good? Yeah. You know, and so it's really, we need the, that level of Americans. You see it with other disciplines. We get top lawyers and judges to be Supreme Court justices. Every lawyer has clerking. You know, whether you look at medicine and the AAAS fellows, you see the, the different disciplines rotate in and out of government. But for tech, we kind of vendorized ourselves. Yeah. And it doesn't mean we won't continue to buy most of the technology for government, either custom or off the shelf, but we need a couple teammates who are architecting at the principal table. Yeah. Same thing with policy making, technical experts who are from yeah. that field making the policy decisions together with extraordinary colleagues from so the So I, I think this is a sort of a prelude to a recruiting call. Those of you we who you. want uh, the government to be smarter about this stuff, do consider thinking about uh, how you can actually help directly and, the, and not just complain. Yeah, uh, Secretary Carter from the DOD is opening an office at Moffitt uh, for, to get closer to, to allow reservists to come through. We have a lot of in incredible American veterans who are in Silicon Valley working as technical leaders, other people who might want to serve yeah. uh, to work on cyber. Uh, crime and, and other other areas. So really terrific yeah. opportunities. The 18F team is here. Yay, 18F. Yeah. They're here uh, just, just right near City Hall. Just uh, so, uh, just to be clear, um, 18F is a new unit of the General Services Administration that's uh, charged with digital delivery, uh, trying to get smart technologists who can actually build uh, things cheaply and know what it really costs, that it, it doesn't cost a billion dollars to put up a website. Uh, it, it's, it's sort of basic uh, to us out here, uh, but unless you actually have that capability in government, you don't uh, get the benefit of the, the knowledge and innovation that's uh, around this country. Uh, so check out at USDS and at 18F, for example, as, as good ways to, uh, to uh, participate. participate. There's also a lot of really interesting uh, stuff happening on the digital front uh, you know, at the city level. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we, uh, the United States Conference of Mayors was just here in San Francisco, and so we grabbed a dashboard. I don't know if we want to show it. You guys it, but can put up that, web, uh, that web slide. So Mayor Garcetti from Los Angeles has been working with his team to build dashboards in the way that he manages the city. We saw Bloomberg, we've seen a lot of great city leaders doing this work. So this was uh, just a little sense of his dashboard, but he released that so that hopefully other, other cities will, will kind of steal that idea. We, we launched, um, you know, we won't put this up here, uh, visual for that, but uh, just, you know, the United States government now has analytics.usa.gov, 138,000 folks are on the websites right now. You can see the top 20. It's usually weather. During tax time, it's refunds. Number three is checking your immigration case. So we need to be informed. You know, NOAA is here. One of my favorites is that the uh, astronomy picture of the day usually here. How are yeah. we using this kind of data, analytics, real time that all of our companies are using to inform yeah. ourselves on what customers want at a governmental level, whether it's, yeah. it's the city of LA uh, or whether it's the federal government. One thing I wanna point out specifically about LA that's super uh, uh, interesting is that uh, you see a lot of these uh, futuristic Internet of Things, you know, super war room dashboard where, you know, it's like obviously, you know, a gazillion dollars went into this, futuristic, uh, you know, city of the future. And, and, and in fact, what I think Mayor Garcetti is committing to is actually, well, we have all these sources of data already. Right. How do we just make these things open? How do we interoperate with applications that are already running? And I think there's starting to be a great consciousness that it's not, we're going to actually build out the government internet of things or the government smart city. It's just that the smart city is bubbling up from all of you guys and totally. the apps that you're building. And with the mayors, uh, one of the things that I always notice, because again, I'm new to government and meeting with them, every mayor in our country has something they've solved. And so part of it is also the social interconnect of them yeah. and their teams. For example, South Bend has collaborated with Notre Dame. They were supposed to build a parallel sewer system because during storms they were dumping in the river, so they needed to have a storm drain thing. Instead, 
using sensors, they instrumented the sewage system and they actually load ballots during storms and pump. And so they've saved over $100 million with kind of smart city technology. And they also now have that IP. And so it's, it's a new, yeah. new opportunity for South Bend. So getting smart about this as mayoral leaders and us as federal government supporting them to cross share their solutions. So um, the title of this talk is Innovation Nation. And uh, I think there's a suggestion there that this is something that we want everybody to be part of. How, can you talk a little bit about your work in that area? Yeah, yeah. it goes in a couple dimensions. One is that, um, for example, in our country, there's five million jobs open right now. Half a million of them are in tech, like sort of our sector. And they're not just here in Silicon Valley or in Austin or Boston in the hubs. Um, though I would say that, I don't know if people have seen Enrico Moretti's incredible book, The New Geography of Jobs, but his thesis, he's at Berkeley, his thesis is showing that for every tech job that you add to a city, it adds five more jobs, two white collar, three blue collar. So it's really an economic engine for the whole community. And he does point out that you need to work as a team on figuring out your transportation and your housing for all those people, which we know really well here in San Francisco and the other brain hubs. But this is true for whether you're doing economic development yeah. you know, here and the, the higher high class problems of having lots of money flowing or places that are really struggling. Yeah. Uh, there's Raj Chetty's breakthrough work from Harvard is showing that if you are poor and you live in particular places, it really has a huge local impact. For example, Baltimore turns out to be a very tough place to live if you're in the bottom of our economy and you should move. So what are we doing to include Baltimore? One of the things we've been doing with them is called Tech Hire. Back to the half million jobs open, we all have invented code boot camps you know, months, not years into these jobs. How do we welcome and encourage and yeah. bring the rest of the community who's not thinking that they're going to go into those jobs yeah. to come and take boot camps it, and track straight into Yeah, I, I think that that's a super important thing. There's so many people who are capable of doing the work, uh, but we don't actually invite them in. Yeah, and, and the networks are disconnected. And, and I think as we, as we figure out better, you know, how to assess people, and again, this, this is data science, you know, this, this company I was just hearing about, I haven't dug into them, called Pegged. Uh, I just heard about this from Byron August, uh, who used to be at the White House. He and I started Tech Hire with the president's support, just pushing us to do it. So yeah, and he was saying this company is basically using data science to identify when people can do a job independent of the resume. And they become, a, a, you know, their, their basic business is helping companies make hiring decisions. Uh, but they decided to build a, an IT subsidiary in Baltimore where they're applying their own technology. And what Byron told me is that 24% of the programmers they're placing are African Americans from inner city Baltimore. Uh, you know, people who went from a job at Pizza Hut to a job as a programmer. Yeah, this and, is totally happening. And, and that's like awesome, you know, that we can actually apply technology to include new people in the, in the tech revolution. We can figure out that it's not just, uh, you know, the people in Silicon Valley who can actually be part of this revolution. The Square team who, uh, Jack Dorsey and Jim, they're from St. Louis. They went back to St. Louis to open an office, giving back locally, and they found they were just recycling the same people between MasterCard and Monsanto. And so they actually called for a meeting, uh, and they just started teaching the Harvard Online edX class with everyone and started funneling people. They've got thousands of people now through Launch Code, which is like a workforce matching where they went to the employers and they said, how can you change your hiring practice so in addition to getting the great four-year, two-year degrees, you can also take this, how do you evaluate? And That's coached right. each other and then got the word out to, to across the whole city, not just to a particular right. group and onboarding thousands of people through that with all the employers. And yeah. same in Louisville, same in Philly, 21 cities are in. It's whitehouse.gov slash tech hire if you want to learn. Right. And we're coming right back around to, um, uh, you know, Mark Hatch's keynote about the role of maker spaces, for example, yeah. and the fundamental facility of bringing people in. You know, his, uh, if you haven't watched his keynote from yesterday, if and you missed it, go watch the video. He was just story after story of you give people the tools yeah. and uh, they figure out how to make cool stuff happen. The best, uh, I was just in one of my favorite maker spaces um, last week at Liberty Elementary in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. uh, very, a school that just had a closed rec center. They opened it back up. It's connected to the school. And also uh, Digital Harbor Foundation has a rec to tech center. So the idea is you take the rec centers that are all across our country and you add a little maker space into it. In the case of the Digital Harbor folks, they have a section called Nano for the little kids, mm -hmm. Mega 
for the big kids high school. And they also did almost a genius bar play yeah. on it where the kids are teaching. So this is something every city can do. Yeah. So there's a lot uh, here. Uh, there's clearly a lot more to be done to make this uh, country and this world uh, actually the beneficiary of all the technologies we're inventing. But thanks very much for what you're doing to thanks help advance me. that. Cool. Yeah.